This is the latest vehicle that we have for the Autonomous Vehicle Innovation Network's uh, demonstration zone fleet. It is a Karma Rivero 2020 GT. Uh, when they came out of their new launch from startup phase, this is their new flagship vehicle, and this is one of the first production models off the line. You want to go classy if you're going to show <laughs> off the tech. Well, yeah, it's. It, that's part of the thing. It's a futuristic vehicle, but it's also being used as a technology platform. And our initiative is actually to showcase Canadian automotive uh, technology startups. I drove one of these things in one of its earlier incarnations. This is a great vehicle, and it was loaded with tech to begin with. So, so now, it seems to be the perfect vehicle for you to demonstrate your stuff with, right? Oh, absolutely. So part of our engagement is to not only work with startups, but be able to work with those OEMs that are looking to build out these futuristic platforms uh, for these vehicles of the future. Okay. Now, I'm really glad a company like you has come along because automotive manufacturers have been trying initially to build their own tech. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that it takes seven or eight years for a vehicle to go from drawing board to production to sales uh, sales room uh, the tech is iterating much much faster so even though somebody like you know uh, Fiat Chrysler or, or GM or Ford or whatever comes up with something really cool six months later it's already outdated so why not just I, I know it was a point of differentiation between manufacturers you know the tech that they had in their cars but they're not tech companies they're car companies so I'm glad to see that more and more companies like yours are going to the tech people and saying, listen, we got a basic set of technology rules here and platforms and back ends. Use our stuff. And you've got some award-winning stuff on this vehicle. Uh, correct. So part of this project now with Karma is to help them develop their autonomous vehicle uh, system going forward. And so one of the companies that we have is a Canadian startup called LetterTech. They are one of the global leading LiDAR companies. Uh, they actually won an award for their letter pixel unit and it was given to them just yesterday at the award ceremony. So let's explain for those who aren't geeks yeah. like Alan what LiDAR. Um, so LiDAR is one of those systems that allows cars to be able to communicate with one another and detect other things on the road. So you have different things like radar, you have infrared, and LiDAR is just one of those other systems, including cameras, that, the, that are used as a tech platform for vehicles to see what's going on around. Oh, I thought LiDAR was just laser radar. There's more to it than that. No, it is. It is the, that laser component. So it is part of the technology. But as we've seen with um, Tesla just wanting to use cameras, we feel that it's going to be a suite of different technologies that are going to be used. And so keeping this Canadian, keeping this working with the globally leading companies, LetterTech is the company that we're working with on this side. Right, because maybe Elon Musk doesn't have to worry about <laughs> snow, but us in Canada, you know, cameras aren't going to cut it. i got a feeling you want to get behind the wheel. I, I really do, because I think... I. Uh, Karma's very cool cars. Yeah. Very cool. All right, let's get in. Let's get in. Cool. So, what are we looking at in here? Well, uh, these are two other companies that we are working with. So in addition to building out their autonomous um, vehicle platform, we also thought we could showcase some uh, other types of companies. So one of them is Inago, and they have a system that essentially is trying to build the, if you remember, Knight Rider kit. So that's, uh, that's the technology that they're developing. You're kidding me! So yeah. wait, wait a second, so you're going to be able to talk in, in natural language to your car? Exactly, and it's going to be able to respond back to you. So if you're asking, how do I set dynamic cruise control, or you know, even if even simple questions like, I'm driving here, can you show me where I can go to order a pizza? And the car will literally talk back to you in uh, in, in natural language form. Oh, okay. I I, I got to get me one of these. Yeah. I definitely because I do have points of interest and everything else on my infotainment system in my car, but I have to look away from the road. It's not voice activated in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And this one is essentially one that's supposed to think too. So it, it might even check the time of day and say, okay, you know what? You need to get gas or you need to charge up your vehicle. So on the way, we know that you like mama's pizza or something along that line, and it's gonna be close. So why don't you think about ordering that? It might be very good because your, your family at home is hungry. Can I ask if 5G figures into your world in any way 
yet. Well, I can imagine it does. Of course it does. Um, that's one of the things where we are working with smart cities like the city of Stratford to figure out how we're going to bring the infrastructure into this. How is infrastructure going to interact with the vehicle? How is the vehicle going to interact with other things to be able to communicate both from stakeholders around the passengers, you know, pedestrians, other motorists, and then again with the infrastructure because it's that connection that's going to allow for safer driving and that's going to allow for better driver experience uh, beyond just driving from one point to another. You know, Alan had mentioned that, you know, it's great that an organization like this exists to bring modern technology into the vehicle today, but the Auto Parts Manufacturers Association has been around for, what, six decades or so. You guys have a long history in this country building vehicles. Uh, for sure. So it's actually been closer to seven decades. So this wow. is our 68th year, and we've essentially grown with Canada's automotive sector. Now, while we don't have OEMs that uh, are headquartered in Canada, all of the parts suppliers, which represents nearly 35 billion or so dollars in, uh, in annual sales, as well as over 100,000 skilled men and women, those Canadian companies are the ones that we represent. And but when you say represent, you're not just a lobby group. No, and that's why we're happy to be talking about this AVEN project right now. So in 2008, 2009, when the world fell apart and we were having to um, work with different governments to bail out OEMs, the suppliers themselves were uh, at a struggling point in that they were so reliant on their OEM partners that they said, you know, we got to start future proofing ourselves. So they started to figure, okay, how we make things is going to be important, but just as important as how we make stuff, it's what we make. And so now we're going to have to start building and making things that are more technology focused because that will be our customers and that will be the value add going forward. Are some things like uh, CarPlay and Android Auto partners or competitors? Um, at this point, pretty much everybody is a partner and a competitor. They're a partner because nobody is really going alone in all this. All the OEMs are forming some sort of partnerships, whether it's to be developing um, electric vehicle platforms and charging systems or whether it be developing autonomous cars themselves. Nobody's really going it alone because, um, number one, nobody really knows what's going on into the future. So there's no way you can bet on one thing. And number two, it's through these partnerships that you'll be able to future-proof yourself. So if my biggest competitor and I are working all on the same things, she's not going to get ahead of me. We'll, we'll still be going at the same distance. So your whole idea is to go to Toyota and Nissan and Porsche and mm -hmm. GM and Land Rover, yeah. uh, yeah. Land Rover yeah. Jaguar, yeah. all of them, and say, look, we have tech that will improve your ownership experience. Exactly. So um, as we talked about LetterTech, and their award-winning letter Pixel. We also have a company, Asara, and this is the first quantum computing, quantum science-based, quantum science-based cybersecurity system installed in any car. So as we're talking about the importance of cybersecurity, and it's on all people's minds right now for many different global reasons, this is one of the things where it's going to impact in that, how am I going to be sure with all of this data, this is going to be creating petabytes worth of data, each vehicle. Um, how are we going to keep that protected and how are we going to keep all the owners, all the passengers, whether it's their vehicle or not, how are we going to keep that secure? Well, the amount of, of security that you're going to have, to, I mean, we saw some demonstrations of people hacking into Teslas mm -hmm. because you can somehow, I don't know, backdoor your way into the, into the infotainment system, mm -hmm. which controls the systems of the cars. So you have quantum encryption? That's right. Um, I'll let our SAR friends talk a little bit more specifically about how their um, algorithms and everything else work, but that's where we're trying to go to. We're, we're not just looking at the today model or tomorrow's model. We're looking at what's going to be necessary in the years to come. So let's find out what's next for the APMA. Oh, well, the, pers the best person we can talk to that about Colin, because 2020 is going to be a big year for us beyond just what we're doing with Avon. 2020 is going to be a year where we do more than just assist the auto sector. Um, how about creating an actual vehicle? You're going to build a whole car. Yeah, the APMA are going to do Project Arrow. And the name's been chosen for a reason, because we were doing things in the 50s which were ahead of their time. Mm -hmm. um, and then suddenly there's been a lapse. But when you've got a global race going on uh, for alternative propulsion, when you've got Canada leading in artificial intelligence and in vehicle technology, 
um, for us to not build our own vehicle to be able to showcase Canadian technology. And that's not just connecting and autonomous. We're talking light weighting, we're talking advanced materials, we're talking all types of advancements in tech. Why not build a vehicle, showcase the platform, it's a Canadian product and really, really push the envelope when it comes to saying Canada needs to build I love that aero reference as well because we really kicked the butt of the aviation industry with the Avro Aero. Yeah, you know, and every, when the Arrow was canceled, everybody went to work for NASA and put man on the moon. So let's let's take advantage of the technology that we have at home. Yeah, one of our challenges again, you know, the accent will give it away that I'm actually from, you know, um, Spain. That the fact that we in Canada are so capable, like if you look at the stats when it comes to technology, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, industry 4.0 readiness, we are doing quite well, um, yet we're so humble. We are always seem to be like, we're not capable of it. You know, the McLaughlin in 1914-15 was the last vehicle we built, which is kind of, you know, where GM Oshawa is situated today. You know, we seem to have walked away and, and been happy for a century to supply only uh, let's build our own OEMs. Let's build a car. Well, it's interesting because there is a company in Markham that actually builds the high-end Ford GT for Ford. So we have the capability. It's just that we don't have anything that we've launched from within the country. So in addition to you know the Avro Aero pulling in tremendous Canadian expertise, you're going to not just turn to your OEMs, you're turning to the research part of Canada and the university system. Well, a, a vehicle is 20,000 components that are combined to build a vehicle. The OEMs are building a portion of it. They keep the sheet metal um, and they keep portions of the engine. The rest of it is outsourced. Canada, with the likes of Multimatic, who are building the, the Ford GT, uh, Magna, who are building you know, multiple kind of vehicles in Austria for, for you know, whether it be BMW or Jaguar or Mercedes. What we're saying is we've got all the capabilities, we've got all the tools in the chest. We just got to put them together, bring them together. So does that mean at CES 2021, we're going to be standing in front of an all Canadian made vehicle? And it may be done using mixed reality. So we're saying, let's not kind of, you know, pump the brakes, you know, pun intended. Let's look at kind of it starting off and showing this globally, virtually. Ah, let's so you're going to put a experience. headset on someone. Absolutely, yeah. Let's, let's, we're going to look at virtual. We're going to look at augmented. Uh, we're going to reach out to the, the amazing universities and colleges throughout Canada. They're all going to be teaming and working with us on this project. And so we're, we're really going to make it more than a, a, a here is our product and we're still very humble. It's going to be a splash. It's going to make a lot of noise. We're already key, we already understand V2X and all, what I call vehicle 2.0. That's the era we're in. The vehicle is becoming the center of the universe. So people are saying numbers are going to drop off, you know, the vehicles are going to die off, we're all going to be ride sharing, ride hailing. I'm saying when a vehicle's co communicating to cities, to other vehicles, to the grid, to pedestrians, to everyone, it suddenly changes what it is. And I think Warren kind of coined it earlier. It's a technology platform and we're going to push that.